What does it take to get us in the game? Hi, I'm Darren Wright from 12 Church, and I've been thinking a lot lately about what is required to move a person from being a passive consumer in a church context to becoming an active participant living all in on mission with Jesus. What actually moves a person from one place to another? I am constantly, secretly observing believers, both those who are not on mission and those who are on mission, to see if there's any common factors that tend to pop up. A couple of recent calls with some friends who are passionate followers of Jesus Christ has helped clarify a few things for me. Now, a lot of churches and organizations talk about a discipleship pathway, which is often kind of like a curriculum, the things that a person needs to know to be kind of founded in the faith. That's not, not what really I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the, the stages a person needs to pass through, the both the knowledge and the habits and the just the posture that needs to accumulate and become a part of them for them to engage on mission with Christ over the long haul. Again, moving from passiveness to activeness and then continuing for the long haul. What actually does it take for that to happen? My working title for this project right now is called the Missional Living Map. We'll see where it lands, but that's my, my working title right now. What is the map? What is the, the pathway a person needs to follow to live on mission over the long haul? The first step as I currently see it, the first domino that needs to fall for a person to move into sustained mission with Christ is that that person is gospel saturated. Now that phrase gospel saturation is often used to describe a ministry approach to the community where you're seeking to saturate the community with the gospel and have people who represent Jesus Christ in every strata and every social group and setting and neighborhood. And I, I love that picture. But I'm talking about more on the personal level, that the person becomes gospel saturated. What does that actually mean? At its core, it means a person has moved from, from any kinds of, of works or guilt or law-based posture in thinking about their faith into true freedom and forgiveness and grace. It means that the person is truly resting in the completed work of Jesus Christ. They have repented of their sins. They're trusting completely in Jesus Christ and they are striving to follow him. And when we are truly striving to follow Jesus, we end up on mission. And so this new location, this new state of being gospel saturated, this new identity being centered around the gospel begins to shape the way the person thinks and the way they speak and, and really the way they do all of life. When you are gospel saturated, you are quick to extend and communicate grace to others. When you are gospel saturated, it makes it impossible to look down on others and become proud in any way because you're constantly aware of the great need you have for God's grace every single moment of every day. Jeff Vanderstelt's book, Gospel Fluency, speaks to a lot of this, to the idea that, that our very language, the way we speak and the way we deal with the ups and downs of life is influenced, shaped, centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that then informs our reactions and our perspective and our interpretation of events, not our feelings, not the circumstances themselves. And it means that whenever we find ourselves sliding back into any kind of guilt-based, works-based, performance-based thinking in relationship to God, thinking in any way that anything we do can either earn us favor with God or anything we do can disqualify us from his grace, that when we see that, we again repent, we believe and rest in the finished work of Christ and continue following him. Gospel saturation means that our foundation is the gospel, that our identity is who we are in Christ because of the gospel. And our thinking and our speaking and our living flows from that well of grace. So at this point, and my thoughts on this are still a work in progress, as is my own growth in mission and living in a state of gospel saturation. But at this point, that's what I see as kind of the starting point of a life on mission. That until this happens, we can't live on mission. But when this happens, 
once you've received so much grace, it begins to kind of build up a pressure and a need to share that grace with others. I've landed on this at the moment. The starting point for life on mission is gospel saturation of my heart and my mind and my life. Being founded on the gospel, being shaped and informed by the good news of Jesus.